Is your marriage over and you're not ready for it to be over? Has your spouse already left and moved on and found a new love? Do you need God's immediate intervention to save your marriage? Well, if you answered yes to any of those questions, or maybe you know somebody that's in a marriage that looks like it's beyond repair, then you'll want to pay close attention to my next guest as what they have to share. It's an amazing story. Dr. Reginald and Renee Morris resurrected their dead marriage. Guys, welcome to the program. Thank, Thank, you. For having Thank us. you for having us. And a little background here. We tried to get you here before weather. Uh, then you almost had another problem getting here this time. <laughs> So I think that you're supposed to be here. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yeah, we had to fight through that. We agree. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you guys are obviously fighters because uh, you have saved your marriage. So, Renee, let's go back. You're married to this guy 30 years. He's a pastor. you got four adult kids. And then you come to him one day and say, that's it. I want a divorce. What was going on? So I had a lot of issues that I had not resolved. And I just felt that the best thing for me would be to just depart and it wasn't the best decision but that was the choice I made and I started walking down that path. Now as a person that grew up knowing the Bible you grew up in a Christian home you knew that divorce wasn't the right way to go you had made your vows till death do you part so how are you resolving that in your mind? So because I was fallen into a state where I was not listening to the Lord. I wasn't thinking about that. Sure, my husband and I got married. We were just like most other couples. We didn't think things would be different after we got married. We thought it'd be the same as when we were dating. We'd stay in love. Things would yeah. be great. We said we'd never use the D word, but I found myself not just saying it, but actually starting to go down that path. And I was spiritually immature. I was walking in fear. I was frustrated. I was upset. And I was just looking for a way out. So Reggie, when she came to you and said, that's it, we're done, I want a divorce, must have been like you got hit with a sledgehammer over the head. I didn't believe her at first. I mean, when she said it, I was, well, you know, we had already separated three other times. So, okay, well, let's see where this goes kind of thing. So, you know. It was when she actually moved out. That's when it really, wow. that's when the, the bricks hit me. And then it was like, oh, she's serious. So you maybe uh, thought she was just trying to get your attention then? It well, I thought she was trying to get my attention. I thought there was a message there somewhere. I just have to dig a little deeper. Maybe I, there's some, maybe, maybe there's some adjustment I could make that she's really trying. I, you know, I had a lot of thousand thoughts going through my head at the time. But literally when the, she and some movers came to pick up the furniture, I think that kind of crystallized <laughs> it for me. So you're a pastor and, you know, you guys have gone to marriage conferences yep. like the rest of us have. Yep. Uh, so what did you, where are you thinking at this time, Reggie? You were thinking, well, I'm, I, what, what have I done? What have I not done or whatever to contribute to this? Yeah, I, I actually did this self-reflection that most people go through. You know, what is it that I did wrong? Immediately you start going down that path and you drive this. Then, of course, then there's this anger that builds up. Well, you know, you know, it's really her. She really did this and this. So you got both sides kind of warring with yourself going on here. But at the end, you know, she's gone. And so then I began to try thinking about, okay, where do we go for next? Because she was asking me for a divorce. Not going to counseling at this point. I actually proposed that. She said, it's too late for that. That was her exact answer. Then she was saying, you, you, we, I want a divorce. You got to give me a divorce. And this thought popped into my head. Why are you asking me for a divorce? If you want a divorce, fine. That's your decision. But then the, the, the thought came to me was, did I have a decision to make? Because so often when divorce comes up between a couple and one person says they want a divorce, the other person feels as if they have no choice. And that's what I started to feel as. So I, but the Lord said, wait a second, you have a choice to make. And that's when everything changed. Okay, we're going to take a break because uh, I want to find out what that choice was and then how you responded to what he was telling you. <laughs> you weren't even all that pleased, were you? We'll take a break and back uh, with the Morrises right after this. <laughs> 